This video is all about polarization and polarization of light. Now this is a new addition to the AS level syllabus, so I also thought I would cover this. Um, the picture that you see here is basically the gist of what polarization is. You see this light, it's going into this filter, and you see that there are vibrations in all directions, and after you go, out of the, go through the filter, there's only vibrations in one direction, up, down, up, down, up, down, and up, down. And this is a simplified kind of imagination of what light actually behaves like. So you can see that it's been polarized in the sense that it only goes up and down. Doing this is basically what polar means. So the definition of polarization is it is the action of restricting the vibrations of a transverse wave, especially light, wholly or partially to one direction. And so we're going to talk about why this has to be something for transverse waves. And that's because for unpolarized waves, transverse waves can have vibrations in all directions as long as it is part perpendicular to travel. We know that transverse waves basically have um, particles that vibrate perpendicular to the direction of travel. So if our wave was traveling like this, um, the waves particles could vibrate up and down like this but it could also vibrate like towards us like front and back and front and back or it could vibrate maybe a little bit towards here or like here as long as it is 50 degrees uh, 90 degrees to the direction of travel so if you were to take this and then basically flip it so that it's heading directly towards us this line would be this dot right um the particles can vibrate up and down like that or it can vibrate side to side, or, or this, or this, or it can be anything. So that's why you can put it through a polarizing filter, and then you can only get one direction. However, for longitudinal waves, just like sound waves, they have particles that vibrate in the same direction as the direction of travel. For instance, if you have you know particles in the air, and the sound is moving like this, then the particles in the air are going to move back and forth in that same direction. So these already only have one direction of vibration, whereas transverse waves have already many directions of, of vibration. These only have one, so it's, it's impossible to further polarize longitudinal waves. That's why you need to think uh, that whenever there is a polarization, it's going to be of transverse waves. So there is a little rule that we're going to use to look at light when it comes to transverse and polarization of waves and stuff. Light is actually an electromagnetic wave. There are components of electric fields and also components of magnetic fields. And the way that I look at it is when there is a shift in electric field, there is a shift in magnetic field perpendicular to the electric field. That's something that you learned in maybe electromagnetic induction. So imagine that the red is the electric field. If there's a shift in the electric field, that's going to make a shift in the magnetic field, just like that. And that's going to make a shift in the electric field again. And then that's going to make a shift in the magnetic field. And so something like that. And the direction overall of travel is like that, kind of. Okay, it's, it's going to be straight. So that's why we see this, like, this diagram of electromagnetic waves there is a direction of travel and then 90 degrees to that is the electric wave 90 degrees to that is the magnetic wave so you do the thing with the hands right like pointing the hands and then making them 90 degrees to each other um so that's that's how they are and you can see that this is not some sort of wave like light does not travel like exactly like that it's actually just a shifting of fields that in like basically induces another shifting of fields and it's a chain of shiftings of fields and so it's not really a, a a wave they don't move like that but you need to assume that just so that you can kind of picture it better for polarization so what i'm asking you to do is basically we're going to first of all only consider electric fields i know that there are electric fields and then also magnetic fields and that's the direction of travel right but we're gonna kind of close one eye and disregard the magnetic field. We only see one field oscillating up and down, that's the electric field. Usually there has to be a magnetic field going like that, perpendicular, but we're going to just ignore that for a second because it's much easier to do so. And we're also going to pretend like they go through this sort of like oscillation, but actually nothing oscillates when light travels because there's no particle, there's no medium. So yeah. 
Now, in polarization, this is what happens before polarization. There is a light that travels within a direction, but the shifts of the electric fields happen in all directions. So it's not the oscillations of the particles anymore because this is light. It's the shift of the electric fields. When light is traveling, you can have electric field shifts like this, to which you're going to get electric a magnetic field shift like that. However, you can also have an electric field shift like that, and you're going to have a magnetic field shift that's perpendicular. And so it can be all directions. It's, the shifts are in all directions. And that's what I'm trying to show here with this colorful little wave. When it goes through this thing, which is what we call a polaroid. Okay, so polaroid or a polaroid filter, um, basically, it's going to only let one direction out. So when it comes out, you're going to see that that mess that I drew just now is going to be tr um, converted into only one electric field direction. See? However, it also means that the component, 90 degrees, magnetic field is also preserved. But this diagram ignores magnetic fields. So you have to assume that the magnetic component is also there. Hence, this is also there. We're just saying every other electrical field is filtered out. That's why we only drew one one wave. So I hope that makes sense. Now, in polarization, the piece of polaroid has, has long chain molecules that absorbs the energy of some, some waves. And these are actually um, plastic polaroids. And plastics are made out of long chains of molecules. And so you can arrange them in a couple of ways. If you arrange them vertically, you arrange them upwards, then light waves are going to be polarized horizontally. And that, that's a weird relationship, but that's just how it is. The light is now plane polarized. So that's some terminology. Basically, what happens is if you align the molecules upwards, like vertically, then only the horizontal wave will come through, the horizontal 90 degrees electric field. Why is that so? Is because let's say you have some, some molecules, like on, and they're in a chain and it's like that. Light waves that travel like this are going to be completely blocked off by this, completely absorbed. However, light waves that travel like this are only going to be absorbed maybe a little bit here, not enough to stop the wave, so that's why it comes through. And then if it's arranged horizontally, it comes through vertically, so it's just an opposite relationship. So, you see that I've drawn these two here. This is how we usually draw um, polaroid filters. We don't draw the molecules in and of itself. If the polarization axis is horizontal, we just draw it like this. This is not a representation of the molecules. It's the representation of what direction does the light come out in. And then this is a representation of like the vertical direction that the light comes out in. Even though the molecules itself will be arranged maybe like that, something like that. That will be the molecule arrangement like that. But, but once you see solid lines that are straight, not like this squiggly stuff, then it means that that's just the, the direction that the light's going to come out in. So let's take a look. Uh, you have unpolarized light, which I tried really hard to draw. And if you put it through this, only up-down oscillations are going to come out. So they're going up and down. However, once you polarize it like this horizontally, 90 degrees, none is going to come out. So there's no more light. And because this is because there's no more component in the horizontal direction. Last time there were, there were some components in the horizontal direction. However, all that has been filtered out, only the vertical has been allowed to come through. That's why nothing's going to come through here. Now, if you have two vertical Polaroid filters, then the vertical light is going to go straight through. There's no difference between the two, so it's not going to stop the light. Now, let's take a look at a law, and this is called Malice's Law. And this is a law that allows you to see the intensity of the light that has been polarized, which is very interesting. So let's say, first of all, for this to work, you need a light that is already polarized. You cannot use some sort of light where there are a whole bunch of light waves in every single direction to do this. You can't have that. You just got to have one light, just one in one direction only. And so it's already polarized. And then you're going to polarize it again. So you are going to tilt the Polaroid filter a little bit so that it has a difference in angle between the initial light and the polaroid. So basically, let's say the light was traveling like this, for instance. It's traveling at an angle. 
and then you put the Polaroid like this. So there is an angle between the Polaroid and the traveling of the initial light. That's called theta. And the amplitude of the filtered wave, so the filtered wave is going to be this. The filtered wave comes out like this. Obviously, it's vertical because the filter is vertical. And this is the amplitude of the filter, right? So you can see that the, the angle of this light has been changed slightly. And so A is the component, actually, of the initial wave's amplitude. Isn't that cool? So you can actually get this through trigonometry. And so if you look at this in a trigonometrical sense, and you can check out my video on how to resolve forces, if that helps, um, this is AO, which means original amplitude. So we know that cosine theta, and let's say this is A, right? This, this straight thing is A, this thing is A original. So cosine theta is going to be A original and A. Therefore, the overall resultant amplitude, which is also this one that comes out, is going to be A equals A O cosine theta, which is what I wrote here. Now, we know that the intensity is actually directly proportional to the amplitude squared. And this is why we come up with the equation that the intensity of the wave that is coming out of this is equal to the original intensity times cosine squared theta. Now, we know that light is consisted of an electric field and a magnetic field at 90 degrees to each other. So if you put it through a full Polaroid filter, only the electric field comes out. However, this electric field is also going to induce another magnetic field and so on and so forth. Now, when unpolarized light is transmitted through a Polaroid filter, it actually merges with one half of the intensity, and yeah, and then only vibrations in one single plane. But it doesn't mean that the light will stop moving, because it's still going to induce the magnetic field. The notion of there being two planes or directions of vibration, as I said, is merely a very simple way to visualize the wave-like nature of the electromagnetic wave. Now, actually, we can use Ma Malice's law to prove what we did earlier. We proved earlier that um, if you have a Polaroid filter like this, and you let some crazy, messy light through, it will come out like this. And then, if you put it through a horizontal Polaroid, no light will come through. And why is that so? Well, we know that the intensity that comes out at the end of the day is equal to the original intensity cosine squared theta. That's Malice's law. Cosine theta is basically, we have to look at theta. This is the direction of the travel of the wave. This is the filter's direction. That's 90 degrees. So I is IO cosine 90 degrees squared. Cosine 90 degrees equals to zero. Therefore, the intensity is zero, which means no light goes through the second filter. So yeah, that's about it for this video on polarization. It's interesting, and I think what's important is Malice's law, and just the, the fundamental knowledge that the polarization only happens for transverse waves. I would say that those two are the biggest takeaways, but other things like how Polaroid filters work and what actually happens is also very interesting. So I hope this was helpful for you and for more videos on similar topics in A-level and AS-level physics, do check out the other videos on my channel. Thank you for watching.